Hey YouTube, it's Guy. Uh, today I have a very long overdue review video on the table. Uh, we're looking at the Casio DW5600E G-Shock. Uh, the 5600E, or DW5600E, is a descendant of the original DW5000C, which was first introduced in 1983. It bears a great number of visual and functional similarities to that original uh, DW G-Shock model. Now the current DW5600E was actually first released in uh, 1996 and uh, many people, uh, I think including Casio as they even state on their website, consider it to be the quintessential G-Shock model. It features their iconic resin case, uh, which is in a relatively thin square form factor. It has uh, an excellent uh, EL backlight illumination. It runs the Casio QW1545 movement, Japanese quartz movement, and actually, as I understand it, it's one of only a handful of watches certified by NASA for space, mi for space missions. Uh, of course, the historic... Omega Speedmaster is another one of those watches, but uh, this Casio G-Shock is supposed to be uh, also a NASA certified watch for space missions. So that's kind of cool if you're, uh, you know, into that sort of thing. Now, there's a number of variations of this watch on the market currently, with a, uh, ranging in a different feature set. Some of them have solar uh, power, uh, but this is just the basic DW5600, and it's one of my favorite digital Casio watch designs. And I put an emphasis on digital because I also really like the design of the MDV106, which is an analog-style dive watch, previously reviewed, if you want to check that out. But as far as digital watches go in the Casio G-Shock lineup, this is one of my favorites. And as a matter of fact, it's really uh, one of my all-around favorite watches in general. Now, the watch is sitting on the table next to the little cardboard box that it comes with, and I just figured I'd give you a quick look at that. So the, the watch comes in this cardboard box, you know, nothing particularly special. There's a little window on the bottom that shows you the model information. If you open that box up, there's a little stand inside, and the watch is sitting on the stand. I don't think I'm going to bother pulling it all out. There's the manual in there, and I think your warranty card and stuff. But I thought I would just show you that this Casio comes in a no-frills, nothing special cardboard box uh, labeled G-Shock. So get that out of the way. And we will talk about the actual watch module. Now, specifications on this guy, get those out of the way. Uh, it is, of course, uh, a G-Shock, so it's going to be shock-resistant. It features their resin case and, and strap. It's a resin strap. I find the strap to be com completely 100% pure comfort, to be honest. A lot of people I hear complain about the Casio straps, but I really love this strap, and I, I have no complaint with any of the resin straps that I've ever experienced with Casio. I'll talk about that more in detail a little bit later. On the back side, we have a steel, stainless steel case back, and it's screw in. I'll kind of give you a quick look at that when I open the watch up and talk about the uh, details in more, or or, or the uh, features in more details. We'll take a closer look at that. Uh, it does have a, I believe, mineral glass crystal covering the dial or the face of the watch. I couldn't really find specifications anywhere to be 100% certain what that uh, crystal material is, but I think it's a mineral crystal. If I had to guess, that's what it looks like to me. Um, if anyone knows, maybe uh, that can confirm with 100% certainty, go ahead and t tell me down in the comments, but I believe it's just a mineral, standard mineral glass crystal. It is 200 meter water resistant, and it features Casio's electroluminescent backlight with afterglow. Now their EL backlight is fantastic. I talked about that in the A168W wristwatch review a while back, if you happen to see that watch review. Um, much, much preferred over Timex's Indiglo or just the standard LED light that you find in some of the other Casios like the F91W. I'll uh, demonstrate that backlight here in a little while. Uh, some of the ma major features of this watch, uh, we have a multifunction alarm, a one one hundredth of a second stopwatch that measures elapsed time, split time, for, and uh, also first and second place. 
Uh, it has a countdown timer with an auto repeat function, and uh, you can get an hourly time signal, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit. Basically, on the hour every hour, you can make the, the, the clock chime if you want to. Uh, moving on to the next page of my notes here, give me just one second. Uh, we also have an automatic calendar that's pre-programmed until the year 2039, so uh, you should never have to change the dates on, uh, like for example, the uh, automatic watch that I'm wearing, it has a date window. When it gets to a month that only has 30 days, on the first of the following month, it's going to just display 31 in the date window. Now, since this is an automatic and pre-programmed calendar, uh, you should never have to deal with that sort of issue. It should automatically detect the correct date once you set it the first time to the correct date and year. You can display the time in both 24 and 12 hour um, formats. So if you're in the military, maybe law enforcement, or in some sort of job that you have to communicate in 24 hour time formats, you can easily switch this over to that. The movement in this watch is Japanese Quartz Module 1545. It has an accuracy rated at plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Runs on a CR21, or I'm sorry, CR2016 battery and should have an approximate battery life of about two years. Of course, depending on how much you use the backlight and uh, potentially some of the other timekeeping features, it could uh, adversely affect that battery life, but approximately a two-year battery life on that uh, 2016 CR2016 battery. Now, like I said in the uh, little introduction, this is one of my favorite Casio watches. It is very, very simple. It has sort of a 1980s throwback, and of course it should, because like I said, it descends from the original 1983 Casio G-Shock, the, uh, uh, what was that, the DW5000C? Um, so of course it's going to, like, have that 1980s design aspect in its DNA, and, and it's very, very visible. But that's probably one of the things that I like about it since I was an 80s child, <laughs> and maybe it just brings me back in time a little bit. I don't know. Uh, but I really, really enjoy the, the design of this watch, and it's super comfortable. It's sized perfectly for me. Again, I have said in previous videos, my wrist size is about 7 inches, so... You know, on my wrist, this is perfect, perfect size. Now, we'll talk about the size and design and all that stuff more in a minute, but first I want to talk about the movement and the functions that this watch has. This watch features four basic modes. We have timekeeping mode, alarm mode, countdown mode, and stopwatch mode, and we'll talk about each of those in a little bit more detail here. Timekeeping mode is the default mode that it's on right now. If we look at it, we can see it's 11.34, Tuesday, May 23rd. This is your quote-unquote timekeeping mode. It looks like I got a little dust there on the dial. Let me wipe that off for you so you're not uh, being subjected to my dust and fingerprints. In timekeeping mode, if we hold down... The, the buttons are on the top left, A, B, C, and D, if you look in the manual. So A, B, C, and D. I believe if we hold down the B for a second, you can see that that little icon appeared just over the uh, seconds counter. Now that is the icon that will give you the hourly chime every hour on the hour. It'll, uh, the, um, the display will light up. And if you also have it on the uh, in the alarm mode to chime on the hour, it'll also chime. So you get a little flash every hour on the hour. You can enable or disable that by holding down that button on the top right. I leave it off just because I don't want to waste the battery. I mean, if every hour you're lighting up the backlight, even for just a second, it's going to chew up battery life, you know? It's just the way it is. Now, setting the watch is pretty simple. The top left button, the A button, is adjust. It's a little bit more recessed than the other buttons, and we'll talk about that. Uh, when we talk about design features. But for now, if you click the adjust button, you are in the uh, mode to set the time and the date. So you can see we are flashing on the seconds. We could set the seconds, then uh, step through to set the minutes, set the hours. Up on the top, you have the year, 2017, and then over in the window on the right-hand side, we have the month and day. So going through here, you can set uh, your time and date. And that's what the uh, what do we call this? The timekeeping mode? That's, you know, all there is to it, really. I uh, think the next mode is going to be alarm mode, right? So, 
there's a couple of different things that you can do in alarm mode. Number one, if you push the B button, you can turn the alarm off, which is the way it is right now. If we push it one time, that little icon next to the AL, AL just means we're in alarm mode, by the way, and uh, that little speck of dust is back, apparently. <laughs> uh, so that first icon is saying that the alarm is turned on. That second icon that just appeared there is stating that the hourly chime is turned on. So every hour on the hour, the, the uh, clock will chime. And then you can have them both on, both the alarm and the chime. Now, when you're in this mode, you can push the adjust, and you can set the hour that you want the alarm to go off. Uh, I believe you push adjust, no, you push the lower left button. Now you can set the minute that you want the alarm to go off, so now we're at 10.50 a.m. Now you can also set the date and uh, month and date. And right now, since they're both, uh, both the month and the date are set to dashes, that means that every day at 10.50 a.m. the alarm will chime. But we could set it to, we'll go out to 10. We could set it out to say every day of October at 10.50 make the alarm chime. Or we could say the sixth of every month at 10.50 make the alarm chime. Or we could specifically say uh, January 1st at 10.50 a.m. make the alarm chime. I don't know why you would want to do any of the other modes other than like every day personally. I, I, don't, I don't see the use of it, but it, you're, you have the capabilities to have it chime every day of a specific month or on a specific day of every month or every day at a specific time. Uh, that, that's your options. Uh, again, and, and like I said again, uh, the, the little icon up next to the AL, you can set it to off, the alarm is on, the hourly chime is on, or bolt is on. Uh, I, I like to have the hourly chime on. I don't use the alarm on this watch, but that's the functionality if you were so interested. The next mode, now when we're in, a, when we're in one of the modes, and we, and we click the mode button, which is button C, or the bottom left. If you've made any adjustments in that mode, clicking that button will take you back to timekeeping mode, or the default view. So now we have to step through, oops, I pushed uh, adjust incorrectly there. We have to step through the modes, past alarm, click again. Now we're in the countdown timer. The cool thing about the countdown timer, and as well the stopwatch mode. That little window in the top right is showing the current time. I like that, particularly in the stopwatch. If I'm uh, timing something just, you know, for 10 or 20 minutes or whatever, I'll usually use the stopwatch, and I can see what the current time is all the time as well. That, that feature isn't available in the alarm mode, but you don't spend a lot of time in there other than just setting your alarm. You might spend a significant amount of time in the uh, countdown or the uh, stopwatch mode. So in this mode, there's, uh, you know, some functionality. You can first of all start it with the top right button, and we have a 24 hour countdown. So it is counting down, and after 24 hours, the alarm will go off. Pretty straightforward. You can, uh, sorry, that's the light. You can stop it, and then click the adjust button to reset it. Now, if you wanted to change how long the countdown is, you push adjust, and you can set the number of hours, click the mode button, and we could switch it over to minutes, and now click the top right button, we could say, okay, two minutes, I want the alarm to go off. And then you can just, you could also say two minutes and ten seconds or whatever, you could set the seconds. Hit the adjust button again, and now we have a countdown timer for two minutes. If we push the top right button, it'll start counting down. After two minutes, it'll, it'll, uh, chime and the, the screen will br blink for, um, I don't know if it's 10 or 20 seconds. Uh, you can also set it to auto repeat, which I've never used so that, let's say it was, let's say you had a, I don't know, an eight hour countdown and you wanted like every eight hours to just continually count down. You can set it to auto repeat and it would just continuously count down and chime every eight hours. Uh, not a particularly useful feature for me, but it's there. Now hitting the mode button again is going to bring us back to timekeeper and then we go mode, mode, and then the third mode brings us into stopwatch. 
Stopwatch is pretty much what you would expect. Uh, it's a 1 one hundredth of a second stopwatch. Uh, the top left button starts it, and the bottom left button will give you your split, I believe. No, not the bottom left. Is it the adjust button? Yeah, that'll give you your split. And then you can just continue by pushing that button again, and I accidentally stopped it. So it's running, you push the top left button, that gives you your split time, 15 and 36 one hundredths, and then you can push that button again and it'll continue back where it was. The top left button is the start stop, I believe the bottom button is the reset, or no, I guess it's the adjust button, resets it when it stopped. Uh, you can tell I don't use these features all that often, but you know, they're very simple to figure out. Your backlight works, obviously, which we just showed <laughs> while you're in the stopwatch mode with the bottom left button. So it's uh, the top left is to start it, top, or I'm sorry, top right is to start it, top left s pauses it for your split time, and then restarts it. The Now the top right is the stop button, and the top left is the reset button when it's not running. And again, you push the uh, mode button, and it takes you right back to timekeeping mode. Those are your four basic functions on this watch. I think it's basically everything that you would probably need. Uh, there's other Casios that have more functionality. I mean, crazy, crazy functionality with, you know, moon phases and tides and all that stuff. I have no use for any of that junk. I think everything that's built into this watch is exactly what I need and what I want. Now, again, this, like, since we're talking about the movements, the, the, the watch's movement and the functionality, this is... Uh, the quartz Japanese quartz module 1545. It is accurate for timekeeping purposes, plus or minus 15 seconds per month. It does again run on that CR 2016 battery with an approximate two year battery life. Um, so that's basically all the information I can give you about the watch's movement and the different modes of and functionality. Next, thing what I want to talk about is the uh, what I like to call quality and design. Uh, First things first, let's talk about the case. This is, of course, a typical Casio resin case. And uh, in the G-Shock line. But, a little bit of dust in there, sorry. I don't, I don't like having my watches look dirty when I'm doing a review. You guys don't want to see that. You want to see a nice, clean, presentable piece. So excuse me for trying to brush it off. Uh, I brought my calipers out. And let me grab those real quick. Let's talk about the size of the case. Uh, since it's a square case, we're going to have two dimensions. It, from side to side, we're looking at, um, it looks about 43 and a half, between 43 and 44. But then there's also top to bottom. And where should we measure from there? I guess maybe from this bezel region is probably a good spot. Uh, we're at about 35 there. So we're looking at 43 and a half by 35 millimeters, side to side, top to bottom. With an overall thickness of approximately, it's kind of hard to see there, 12 to 13, 12 to 13 millimeters thick. I mean, overall, it's a pretty thin presentation. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, well, here, here is what I want to show you. Here's another um, G-Shock that I have in my collection. This is the DW9052, I believe. Let me check my notes. I think I wrote it down. Um, yeah, DW9052. This is the 9052. Let me unhinge the buckle and show you guys the difference. Function functionally, these watches are basically identical. The layout of the dial is a little bit different, but look at the difference in thickness between these two watches. The, the 9052, substantially thicker, if you just look at them visually. Um, let's actually measure it just out of curiosity and see, yeah, we're at a full 15 and a half, maybe almost 16 millimeters thickness on the DW9052. And what did we say this was? About 13, yeah, uh, 12 and a half, 13 and a half, somewhere in that ballpark. So while maybe 13 millimeters isn't super, super thin by quartz watch standards, I mean, for for a G-Shock, it is pretty thin, and I wanted to bring this one out and kind of show you. You know, functionally, like I said, these watches are identical, with the exception of a couple little doodads on the dial of this uh, 9052. Uh, but it's, well, you know, there's 
the backlight button is down here on the bottom instead of one of the side buttons. So that's a, a nice feature of this one. I'll review this watch later too. I just wanted to bring it out and show you guys some differences. A lot of the Casio G-Shock line have this sort of rounded dial as opposed to the classic square dial. My, From an aesthetic point of view, I prefer this... Uh, no, I'll call it the 1980s inspired square design. I think it's a really cool, very nice aesthetic. I don't like the round sort of turtle shell shaped dials of a lot of the other G-Shocks like this one in particular. It's a good watch, don't get me wrong, but um, aesthetically it's not my preference. But I'll get that off the table and we'll talk a little bit more in detail about this guy. Again, we were talking about the case. We discussed the dimensions here. Uh, the watch strap, I don't know if I said the... Uh, watch strap up here at the I guess the lug what are we looking at here well over 25 millimeters 25 and a half almost 26 millimeters there but it tapers down excuse me for bumping the camera tapers down at the very end to a, a, a pretty standard 19 to 20 millimeters so it's it's a little thick it's chunky up at the uh the lug portion as the you know the case itself it's a little bit chunky as well but um super comfortable and it tapers down exactly to where you'd want it so yeah we have this like i said uh resin case it's basically what gives you the shock resistance of all g-shock models it's sort of the main thing that that affords you all of that shock resistance the case covers the module and your buttons now the top left button the adjust button is recessed a bit uh, pushing the mode button the light button uh all, all, all four of the or three of the other buttons have a little bit more of a, a standing a standoff from the case whereas this adjust button is a little more recessed i suppose that's just so it's less likely to be bumped because that's where you control all of your functionality, you see I pushed it and that gets us into the mode to uh, adjust the time. So in order to prevent you from probably accidentally messing something up, uh, yeah, it's it's just a little bit recessed. People complain about it. I don't think it's a big problem. It is what it is, though. Uh, obviously, we looked at the brace or the strap a little bit. It is also a resin strap. The buckle is a nice stainless steel buckle. Nothing really fancy. I think it's signed on the back side with the uh, Casio, yeah, Made in China Casio logo. While this is a Japanese company and the movement is supposed to be a Japanese quartz movement, I'm sure a lot of the assembly goes on in China. I, as a matter of fact, if we look at the stainless steel case back, I bet it says China on there as well. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, on the bottom side there, stainless steel back, Made in China. But we do have water resistant 200 or 20 bar, which is 200 meters. The Casio G-Shock resist logo dw 5600e um you know overall pretty nice presentation for i mean basically what the, what is this a 50 dollars watch something like that um so so that's your stainless steel case back your resin case and your resin strap along with the buckle i didn't mention there's a resin keeper and a nice thing about this keeper when when the watch is on your wrist you can see on the back side of the strap there's all these little grooves what that does is uh, it keeps everything kind of like sl slip free. Like the keeper doesn't want to come undone easily. I like that a lot. Uh, I hate when a keeper on a watch is flopping all over the place. Maybe it comes all the way off and the tail gets loose. I can't stand that. Not a problem on this watch. This keeper, because of the grooves on the back side of the strap, keeps it situated very, very snugly. There's a little bit of play, but there's like... Uh, two points there where like there's some resistant resistance and it doesn't want to just naturally or orga organically move on its own so i wanted to point that out that's a nice little feature that uh i assume was intentional i don't think it was an accident but it's not something that i've heard in uh, other people's reviews of this watch i do occasionally watch other watch reviews too i like to see what other people say about things that i'm interested in before i buy them and I like watching reviews of stuff that <laughs> I've already bought just to see if people will reinforce my decisions. Uh, I hope, hopefully you guys do the same thing. I'm guessing a lot of you do. Now, we talked about the case, the case bag. We talked about the strap and the buckle and the buttons. Uh, let's talk about the dial layout. This is, again, one of the things that I like a lot about this watch. And I'm going to pull out that 9052 again. Again, these are functionally almost identical as far as what features they offer. But you can see on the 9052 on the right, you have like these extra little like, I don't know what you would call them, meters. 
and what it does, like it's a seconds counter right there, and then every 10 seconds this little this little circle gizmo kind of, see if I can get, get enough light here, kind of ticks over. So we're at 38, 39, 40, and you see that, I don't know if you noticed that ticked over. I mean, that's honestly, for me, just junk I don't need on my dial, if I'm being honest. I just, uh, I don't find that to be like value-added features. It's not useful. When you're in stopwatch mode on this, for example, you can, uh, what do we start on this one? It's the bottom button instead of the top button. It's goofy. Uh, you can see like that little meter is like running light at the backlight, probably make it easier to see. Um, and then 10 seconds, the circle little thing fills in. I just don't need that functionality if I'm being perfectly honest. It's not important to me. And I think it clutters, uh, clutters the dial and sort of detracts from the design. On the other hand, I very much like the dial or face design and layout of this watch. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. It's not cluttered up with a bunch of garbage I'm not interested in. You know what I mean? It's all just right there. You got your time. You got your day. You got your date. You click the mode button, you know, your, your alarm. You set the time you want the alarm to go off. You set if you want it to go on specific days or of the day of, or of the month or on specific, or what, you know, whatever all those options are. Too many that are unnecessary, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, on the countdown mode, you know what I mean? You, you see your current time up there in the top. You have your countdown timer. It'll just count down for two minutes. You know what I mean? It's, it's, that's perfect. And the stopwatch mode, uh, which obviously it's not going to go to until we cycle through there. Again, it's just perfect. Everything is just simple and laid out. There is some like printing and graphics on this dial. You have protection, G-Shock, Casio Illuminator, water, 200 meter resist, uh, down at the bottom, alarm, chrono, uh, electroluminescent backlight, shock resist. There's a lot of marketing junk printed all over the dial. And it could be, you know, by some people considered to be a bit much and just sort of look maybe cheesy. I don't mind that, though. That's part of the, like, 1980s nostalgia for me. It's part of what I like about it. But I know that some people are going to think that it kind of just looks uh, hokey or cheesy or overdone. I get it. Uh, but it's not a problem for me. All of that extra printing and basically, you know, <laughs> marketing, feature marketing, is not a detractor for me. While on the other hand, on that DW9052, these extra little, like, gizmos and dials and stuff, that is a detractor to me. Uh, but this is, don't get me wrong, this is a good watch. The buttons are really nice and easy to actuate on this watch, whereas these little metal buttons are a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, in particular, the light button, this big red G here, that lights up the... Uh, electroluminescent backlight and the afterglow lasts for about two seconds. On the DW5600, apologize there for bumping the camera, the bottom right button is the backlight and uh, again it's super super legible. If you hold it in it'll stay lit for as long as you hold the button in for and you release it and you get about two seconds of afterglow. Some Casio watches like it it has like an on off if you just tilt it like if like, it's, if you simulate this movement of, like, your wrist, like, looking at the watch, it'll automatically turn on. Um, this watch does not have that functionality. I'm not sure if any of the uh, variations have that functionality either. Like I said, there's a solar version. I think there might be one that has the automatic time sync from the, like, radio frequency. You know, it picks up the signal and it, like, automatically sets the time every day or whatever. I don't know, maybe some of those have that automatic electroluminescent light on and off by tilting the watch. Um, I'm not sure, but this one does not. That other G-Shock that I have there, that does not either. But just overall, I think that this is an excellently executed G-Shock or, you know, I mean, wristwatch in general. If you want a digital beater watch that you can do anything with, how do you beat this. I'm not sure. A 200 meter water resist, I haven't subjected this to water at all, not even like under the faucet or anything. I'm sure that you are not supposed to actuate any of these buttons while it's underwater. I'm sure that that's a potential point of entry for water leakage if you were to do that while it was submerged, but 200 meter water resist is pretty impressive. I would not be worried about testing this in, you know, swimming, maybe even scuba diving up to, uh, you know, reasonable depths, snorkeling, water sports, whatever. 
And the main reason why I wouldn't be concerned about it is because it's so inexpensive that it's easily replaceable. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like, uh, well, for example, this uh, Hamilton watch that I'm currently wearing, it's, you know, 350 to $400 watch in the gray market, and it's supposed to be a 100 meter water resist, but I don't think I'm going to risk it personally. Um, I'm not going to get it wet. It doesn't have a screw down crown, and it's rather expensive, in my opinion, you know, for me. Some, some people might think a $400 watch is a trivial amount of money. Kind of like, I guess I feel like this $50 watch is more or less a trivial amount of money. I mean, I wouldn't want to throw $50 in the garbage. It's not like the Casio F91 at $10. That's a trivial amount of money. But my point is that because it's inexpensive and very easily replaceable, I would have no qualms about taking it into the water, even though it's, you know, a digital watch with these push buttons on the side, which could very, very easily be points of entry for water. Basically, that's about all I got to say about this watch. I think it's a steal at 50-ish dollars. I think it's an awesome design. It's got all the functionality that I want in a, you know, digital sports watch. Super accurate, super durable. I think it's honestly attractive. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And uh, if your eye is not uh, accustomed to beholding 1980s style designs, maybe you would disagree that this is not a very attractive watch. I grew up in the 1980s, so, you know, it's almost nostalgic for me in that regard. Um, I'll go ahead and give a wrist shot, I guess. Why not? Take the Hamilton off. I don't really usually do wrist shots just because it's it's not really, I don't know, a good perspective. Like, the camera's all zoomed in, and I don't know. People always say, what, no wrist shot in my comments, so fine. I'm going to go ahead. I'll throw it on the wrist and show you guys the watch on my wrist. Those of you that want to see it, I hope you're happy. But I just don't think like it's super representative of what you can expect because of the position of the camera and how zoomed in I am. But, you know, there it is. When it's on the wrist, actuating the light button is super easy. It's just this bottom right button going into the different modes. If you want to go to stopwatch mode, for example, there you are. Um, resetting the stopwatch is a problem because it's this adjust button and it's recessed and it's a little harder to get to. But, you know, turning it on turning it off, and then you got to reach over to reset, pushing the mode button to get back to tie and keep mode. Again, the lower lower right button is the light. Um, it's awesome. It, it really is. It's a fantastic watch. I love it. Uh, super comfortable bracelet. I probably have it on a notch, one notch tighter than I might normally like here. I, I often forget because I have so many watches. Where's like the notch that I like to wear it on? I might go one looser on that. But on my seven inch wrist, you know, that's that's what you get. So guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. I appreciate it as always. Down in the notes section below the video, if you're on a computer web browser, I will have a link to this on Amazon. If you're considering purchasing it and you purchase it through my Amazon affiliate link, I get a small commission, which helps out the channel. I appreciate that very much. Also, you'll find links to my social media accounts, be it Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it, the description of the video. I appreciate you tuning in and checking it out. I'll be back. I might do another video this week. I need to review a, well, I need to review that Casio DW9052 uh, as well. Um, and uh, probably do a, a, a true comparison of these two watches, a video, a true comparison video maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I have a bunch of stuff in the pipeline. So we will see you soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.